Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic is about nutrition, and we're going to discuss as your body changes, your food must change. So, too often in diets, and this is for uh, weight loss and weight gain, so all you people who want to build muscle, uh, don't dismiss this podcast. This is not just for the people who want to get skinny. <laughs> so, um... But as you would do a diet, uh, and again, that's a diet meaning a structured way of eating. So I use the word diet um, probably uh, more liberally than most people would. Uh, when I use the word diet, I'm usually referring to a structured way of eating, not actually just weight loss. So you can actually eat a weight gain diet, a weight gaining diet. That just means, again, a structured way of eating. So um, when you do a diet, <laughs> uh, as your body would change, which hopefully it will if your diet is correct, you then have to continue to make modifications on what your diet parameters are. And the reason for this is as your body changes, its needs and its demands are going to change. So what this means is as I would go heavier, if I'm trying to build muscle, as I build more muscle, my body burns more calories at rest. So I would have to, if I want then more muscle, have to give it more calories. So maybe my initial change at first was to add, um, say, um, 1,000 calories to your like weekly average, something like that. I don't know, just something, throw something out there. So say maybe you were eating before uh, 3,000 calories, and let's say you went up to 3,500. And you want to see if you can build muscle there. So that initial 500 is going to seem, and that's every day, so um, if that's going to seem like a boost, your body's going to take that, and whenever you train, weight train, you have muscular damage, your body's going to take those extra calories if you eat your macronutrients correctly, and it's going to repair the muscle in a way that makes it bigger and thicker. Then, as the muscles get bigger and thicker, the body's um, amount of muscle tissue will increase, and muscle tissue is metabolically active, meaning that it requires uh, energy from the body to stay alive. The body has to nurture it and take care of muscle tissue. So as you get more, your body requires more just as maintenance. So now you no longer have a 500 calorie surplus. As you build more muscle, it uh, turns into maybe only a 400 calorie surplus. Then a 300 calorie surplus. And then all of a sudden, some days you're, you know, some days you're not working out, so you have a little extra. Some days you do an aggressive workout, and then plus maybe you go shopping and you have to walk around the mall for five hours. Um, that's going to burn up more calories. So all of a sudden that 300 calorie uh, extra on one day isn't an extra. Maybe it's just what you needed. Maybe you have a really active day, you work in the yard one way on the weekend, and you burned 500 calories more. Well, now you're in a little bit of a deficit. So whenever that surplus that you originally set up, becomes only a small type of surplus, it then becomes not consistent enough of a surplus to be, to be able to build more muscle. So you kind of come to a plateau and your kind of muscle building will kind of stop. So then you would have to eat more calories, maybe boost up another 500. And the same process occurs. If your training is correct and you're getting muscle damage, your body will build more muscle out of that surplus. But then again, the surplus becomes so small and variable that all of a sudden it's not a surplus anymore. So then you got to go up another 500 calories. So you can see how that's the, pro the way the process goes. And I'm going to share with you guys a story here in a second about how that was my process. When I graduated high school, I was very uh, kind of like a skinny fat. I was six foot tall, 165 pounds, but you could grab rolls of fat on me. So I was maybe 140 of actually muscle at six foot tall. So I was a string bean. And what I found was over those steps of adding calories, it became so freaking hard to eat that many calories. So we're going to talk about how I overcame that. But using this same example real quick for the people who want to lose weight, if you reduce your calories, so uh, fat loss comes down to kind of like you either want to burn more calories or eat less calories, but somehow you need to be in a caloric deficit. So you need to use up more calories than what you um, uh, would need to stay alive. So you have to kind of uh, have a surplus of activity and requirement of calories rather than the calories you're having. So maybe at first you reduce your calories by 500. And your body says, oh, okay, you know, dang, that's, uh, that's not as much as we need. Um, we're going to have to pick away at some of our stored energy to make up for that gap. So it starts picking off some body fat. So that way you're no longer at 500 calories under what it needs. It maybe grabs 100 calories out of body fat. So now you're only at 400. So you lose a little bit of body fat. That looks good. Then all of a sudden it, it grabs another 100 calories out of like body fat, and now you're down to 300. So that looks pretty good. But, like we said, eventually you get into the process where 
maybe one day you're not quite as active. Even day you're just kind of lounge around the house, you didn't do much. Uh, or maybe you're like mentally stressed. Maybe you sit at a computer all day and you're mentally stressed out of your mind. But there's not a lot of physical calories being burned. So then all of a sudden that little bit of caloric deficit you have, it's kind of there some days, some days it's not. You know, some days you're more active, some days you're less active. So now all of a sudden that stimulus of burning off body fat becomes less frequent, less intense, to the point where it becomes almost negligible. So you're no longer actually making progress. So then you say, oh man, I plateaued, so I'm going to have to take another 500 calories away. And again, you get like a boost out of that a little bit, but then it plateaus. Then you say, oh man, i got to take another 500 calories. So eventually it's the same process, just in reverse. You have to go down in calories. But eventually there becomes a limit to how, how little you can actually eat. <laughs> so if you started at, say, a 2400 calorie average, and now all of a sudden you're down to 1,000 calories, is taking more calories away going to be the best answer? And the answer to that is, hell no. <laughs> so um, that's where like being physically more active helps. Uh, the way in which you change your food helps. So in this example, we're discussing a caloric change, but that's not the only change that you can make to your food to get results. And that's for both weight gain and weight loss. So we did a, a podcast in the past, uh, podcast number 41, called Diet Right, What Matters Most. And we discuss the components of a healthy diet. And again, this is a diet, so the word diet, and it refers to either weight gaining diet or weight loss diet. So just a structured way of eating. We know that the most important component, the most impactful component is calories. So that's why we talk about that in our example, is you would either add calories or reduce calories if you want to make a change. But what happens if you've maximized the calories that you can eat and you can no longer change that component? or you've taken away as many calories as you can withstand, and you no longer can change that component. So the second most imp important component is macronutrient uh, uh, percentages. So we know in our foods we have uh, fat, carbs, and proteins. So you want to make sure that you're eating the right amount of proteins, the right amount of carbs, and the right amount of fats. If you're not eating the right amount of those uh, nutrients, then the effect that you're getting out of the amount of calories you're having now is not maximized. So rather than reducing or adding more calories, you might want to change that one component, that macronutrient percentage. Change that component to be maximized first, and you can get more results out of the calories you're already having. Okay? The third component we have is meal timing, and that means am I matching my intake to my outtake? <laughs> so am I eating the calories when I'm burning the calories? And that's a significant, significant thing that a lot of people don't address. So, and that's the third most important, and that's definitely something that if you're not maximizing that component, you're not maximizing the results out of the calories that you're already having. So before you make a caloric change, you want to look at this component first, and that's meal timing. Then it goes down further, and it talks about macronutrient quality, and then there's um, like just kind of a mix-matched uh, category of like supplements and whatnot. So... That's what you want to do. For every caloric amount that you're eating, when you decide on a caloric amount, before you change that amount for more results, you want to first look at your macronutrient percentage and say, am I eating the right percent of each of my macronutrients? You then want to look at your meal timing and say, am I eating at the right times of the day? I want to make sure those components are really good first before I make a caloric change that maybe I didn't need to make. Because I might be able to get results out of changing just those other two components to where I don't even need to change my calories yet. I can get a boost in results before I have to make a caloric change. So that's the idea. Um, so go listen to podcast number 41, Diet Right, What Matters Most, if you haven't yet. And that'll tell you why, what these components are and what are the ways to manipulate them. Then we do have individual podcasts about carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So in the podcast search function, um, uh, you can just kind of search protein and you'll find the podcast for that. But, so that's what you want to do. That's a whole lot of information in one little go there. Um, but I wanted to kind of come across and discuss this because too often people set a, a diet in motion. And they get some results and then they, they're surprised that the results slow down. And then whenever they quote unquote plateau, they're like, oh, what do I do now? That's going to happen to every single person who ever does a diet. So what you did today with the body you have today will not work when you have a different body. Okay, that um, I, as a nutritionist and somebody who helps people with this, I am constantly surprised, so maybe that's a bad acceptance of reality on my part, 
I'm, I'm really genuinely constantly surprised when people get flustered by this concept. So if somebody's like 200 pounds and they say, well, I've been doing this diet and I got to 180, but now it's no longer working. No shit. You weigh 180 now. You don't weigh 200. <laughs> so what you did at 200 isn't going to work when you're 180. You're a different person. So that would be just like if I took a diet that my mom was following and was surprised it didn't work for me. I'm a different person. Of course it's not going to work. The 200 pound you is a lot different than a 180 pound you. People don't recognize that maybe a 20, 30 pound weight drop has that significant of a change, but it does. So it changes the way in which your body um, processes things throughout the day. So if your body is processing less efficiently or more efficiently, you have to alter uh, what you do based on that. So that's um, why I have a job, because a lot of people have trouble doing that, and it is a little bit of a complex concept. However, it can be as simple as, as my body changes, I need to change. So if I did a caloric reduction, and that helped me lose weight, maybe I need to do another caloric reduction. So, like we said, though, you want to look first at macronutrient percentage and meal timing, and then macronutrient quality, which is, you know, am I eating Oreos for carbs, or am I eating uh, rice and potatoes? So you want to make sure you're eating good quality of food. But you would look at those components, maximize them for the caloric amount you're at. Once you have those components maximized for the caloric amount you're at and your results slow down, then you need to change your calories and then re-maximize those other components. So that's the process you're going through, every step, every step, every step. So when you track your progress and it starts to slow down, it's time to you, for you to re-evaluate all of those components. You maximize the subcomponents. Once they are, you change your calories. That'll get you another boost in results. Once that starts plateauing, again, you relook at your components. You might have gotten off track along the way. So make sure the subcomponents are correct, and then you adjust your calories. So that's the process. It's that simple. Okay? So, a little bit about my story. So like I said, when I graduated high school, I was super kind of skinny fat. I didn't have a lot of muscle, uh, but I was fat. So... I had the challenge of I wanted to build more muscle, but I didn't want to be as fat. So I, had, I wanted a caloric surplus so I could build muscle, but I needed a caloric deficit so I could lose fat. So at that time, I didn't really understand all this stuff. So I was a moron, and uh, I was like significantly overeating at certain times, significantly undereating at certain times, and I was trying to achieve both goals. And that did not work with how extreme I was trying to do those goals. So... Could I have eaten at a maintenance caloric level and trained really hard and made sure my food was super clean, like good healthy components, no junky food, and I would have slowly gotten leaner, I would have slowly built more muscle. But I was an impatient young dude, and I wanted muscle now, I wanted fat off now. <laughs> so I did the most extreme and the craziest stuff you could ever do. So um, w uh, originally I basically decided uh, that the process of fat loss if I were to lose all my fat, I would be so dang skinny that I wouldn't like the way I looked. So I was like, okay, let me hold on to some of this fat so I have some size to me, and let me build muscle underneath it. So that became my goal, uh, was to build muscle while not trying to get at, like too much more fat. <laughs> so um, eventually, as I gained more weight and gained muscle mass, there became a limit to how much I could eat of like clean foods. So I was eating, you know, chicken and rice every day, all day, uh, trying to get my vegetables in, trying to eat super clean, not no a lot of sauces on anything, uh, everything was cooked like cleanly, and it just became like I was trying to eat 4,000, 5,000 calories a day of food, of just super clean food, and it was just wicked. It was really hard to do, especially with um, uh, college schedule, and like, because uh, I was in college taking 20 credits, plus having a part-time job and stuff, so it was kind of hard to eat, um you know, fresh cooked food and eat the certain types of foods all day, every day. So then I started doing small cheat meals. And um, so that represents my first change as, as my body changed, I recognized, I recognized that the way I was eating needed to change. So I started eating cheat meals on the days of my training. So I figured, okay, I need to have more calories so my body can build muscle. But I don't need the calories on the days I'm sitting on my ass doing nothing. So what I'll do is for the meals after my workouts, I'll have bigger calories. So I would start to go out and instead of eating chicken and rice, I might eat steak and rice. I might even go out and eat like a burrito or have some pizza or something. So, and what it helped me do was I helped boost up a little bit more in weight. But 
At first, I didn't recognize this. I didn't know it. I was overeating those cheat meals. So I might have only really needed like a 100 or 200 calorie increase, but I was eating like an entire medium Domino's pizza. So, <laughs> so I was getting like a 3,000 calorie difference. Uh, so I was just getting chunky. So I was gaining muscle, but I was getting fatter. So then I learned, okay, I do need more calories, but I need them in more controlled ways. So then I just started eating my normal foods, but eating kind of... Um, eating them in different ways. So instead of chicken and rice, I would have steak and rice. Because in the same volume of food, the steak added way more calories than the chicken. And then I'd even put oils on my food because oil didn't register as like something volumized that once in your stomach would pressurize the walls of your stomach and send the signals that you'd be full. So you could do oils because it adds a ton of calories without your body recognizing it. So I switched from meals of chicken and rice to steak and rice doused in oil. And that really helped me gain a lot of size uh, and actually helped me get leaner because the calories I was eating now were better matching the caloric need that I had at the time. So if I only needed 300 calories, I was no longer eating 3,000. I was actually eating about 300. And then what was cool about like eating steak and having fats was it slowed down the digestion of that food. And that way my body could slowly break it down and use it more of it for muscle tissue. It didn't have to digest all of it super fast and only use some. It got to draw out the digestion process and get to use a greater percentage of those calories. So that was a really awesome process. And then um, just throughout the years, that's what I had to learn, was ways to eat more nutrient-dense foods and eat in ways in which my body would not register that I was having a higher amount of caloric intake so that way I wouldn't feel as full at each meal and I could get more calories in. So that's some examples. So that's uh, some ideas to give you if you're going for weight gain. Then weight loss, it's the same process like we said. is um, You have to do a caloric reduction usually initially uh, or just clean up the way you're eating. So if you're uh, brand new to kind of starting a diet is don't worry about a caloric reduction. Just try to eat better. So we talked about those components is don't change your calories. Just try to clean up your macronutrient percentage. Make sure you're eating the right amount of carbs, fats, and proteins. Make sure you're eating a meal timing that better matches your activity level. And then make sure you're eating clean, healthy foods. So like like we said, rice and potatoes rather than Oreos. So if you change those subcomponents, you don't even have to change calories and you're going to get results first. So that's actually the best way to do it. Because before you make a caloric change, which is going to start changing your metabolism, you can make a change to those subsections, and that's going to get you better results before you mess up your metabolism by reducing calories. So that's what I wanted to get across in this podcast was the idea that what you did at the initial start of your diet is not going to magically work forever. So as your body changes, you will have to change. It just kind of makes sense, right? So we have to continue to learn, uh, which is what you're doing by listening to this podcast, is you're trying to learn how to do so better. How can I make these changes in a correct way so that way I can get the best results out of my efforts? And that's what I'm telling you. That's the secrets we're dropping here, (laughs) is that you need to go listen to podcast number 41, learn the components and the significance of them in a diet, and then start to manipulate those components other than just calories. There's more to diets than just calories. Manipulate those subcomponents along with manipulating your calories. And that's going to get you your best results. Okay? Then, we haven't even talked about the way you're exercising, or if you're exercising at all, but that's a huge component as well. So just go a couple podcasts back to podcast number 186, and uh, it's titled Change Your Food or Change Your Training. And that'll also help you understand that in this podcast, we're talking about what type of caloric changes to make if you're going to make your changes to your calories. I mean, your food. Um... But there's a whole other area of changing your exercise. And you can change your exercise in a different way, so that way maybe you don't have to change your calories yet to get better results. So go listen to podcast number 186, uh, Change Your Food or Change Your Training. And, and if you think you have to change your food, then add the knowledge of this podcast to that, so that way you can make the best and the correct changes to your food. Cool. Whew. So hopefully that was helpful. I think that was me talking way too fast. <laughs> so, But hopefully there was some uh, decent retention out of all that rambling. And hopefully it made sense. So if you're trying this stuff and you're struggling, reach out to us at BrutalIronGym at gmail.com. And we'll help you out. Okay. So we'll ask some questions. We'll get some feedback from you and make sure that you kind of can make these changes in a better way. So if you're getting flustered, but you truly, truly want to make progress and you're just like getting... Like I said, flustered and it's kind of overwhelmed. Shoot us an email, we'll help you out. Okay? Again, the email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. Cool. 
So, um, hopefully you like this information, and if you do, you can find more from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. And if you like the podcast, you can sign up to become a patron of the podcast by donating $10 or more a month, and that helps keep the podcast going, so thank you if you do. And then also, for your $10, you uh, are able to pick uh, online training programming, so that's often what a lot of people like or need or want is what to do when they're in the gym or what to do at home when you want to work out. So for your $10 donation, we're going to give you some programs. It can be for any goal, strength, aesthetics, overall health, like we said, training at home, training at a gym, anything. Just tell us what your goal is, and we'll send you out a program for it every single month for your donation. It'll be a new program, has progressions in the exercises, it even has video descriptions of the exercises, somebody showing you how to do them. Okay? So it's super duper helpful, just $10 a month. If you do want to become a patron, you can do so directly on the Podbean app. You can send us an email or do a Google search for Become a Patron Brutal Iron Gym Podcast. Cool. Now, if you like the podcast, please share it with family and friends. So the more people we help, the happier the world will be. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. So this podcast is for you. We want to make sure that we're talking about what you want to learn about. Okay, so let us know. Our email is brutalirongym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful. And thank you for listening.